Well, hello again. This is Buck Benny speaking. Welcome to another episode of our presentation of the TV series of uh, The Jack Benny Show. And today's focus is on a very rare episode that's out there on YouTube that we were excited to see and none of us had seen it before. Uh, it's uh, doing, it's uh, the Gaslight episode. And uh, Kathy's going to fill us in on why it's so um, notorious of an episode. And uh, it features Barbara Stanwyck, who is wonderful in the, throughout this episode. I love her performance in the episode. But let's go over to Kathy, and she will tell us a little bit of the background of the episode and, and what's going on here. Well, Kathy. Uh, <laughs> hi, folks. And uh, you're right. It is Jack loved the adaptation. I, you know, he, he loved doing this because he'd done it, I think, several times on radio. And um, as, as you say, Daryl, he'd done it once live in 1952. Well, um, uh, the real reason, I mean, one of the reasons, he repeated a lot of the live shows for, um, uh, for tape and film in 1953. And that was they had discovered the usefulness of reruns. And as well as the higher quality of a film program versus the um, fuzzy kinescopes that right. folks who uh, that audiences who did not yet have access to um, uh, the network feed. So there, there were economic reasons for going ahead and um, uh, uh, doing the show uh, uh, on film. But this indeed um, involved Jack in what uh, ended up being a, a very large lawsuit because I believe it's MGM who owned the film, uh, the film rights had never really minded radio adaptation uh, uh, because uh, that was not a replacement for the film. And, uh, and so the live television to the small East Coast audiences and the fuzzy kinescopes were also kind of okay with the studios. But when um, Jack decides to commit it to film, uh, the studio, film studio, decides to make a test case of it and to say that no, that uh, was uh, 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 taking too much of the original property. It was creating too much of a rival product for their film. Now, mind if the studios are losing money out the wazoo because um, uh, movie attendance is dropping and they're starting to think about, well, maybe someday we'll put our films out on television and we don't want these television versions of it. So again, it's an economic decision, not that they hated Jack, they loved Jack, but they chose to um, uh, 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 double down and make a huge lawsuit against Jack and CBS, uh, 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 forbidding them. And so Jack had actually made this episode, and uh, uh, the lawsuit prevented it from being aired, and he had to quick do something else. But he held on to it because he liked it, and several years later, um, uh, he was finally able to uh, uh, put this into rotation and release it as an episode. So. Right, and, and it was, uh, so it was 52 it was done live, 53 that they filmed this one, and not till 1960, I think it was, wow. it actually yeah. got released uh, as, a, as an episode. No. And uh, in reading Mary's, not Mary's book, in reading uh, Laura's book, uh, I, I noticed the part, and, sh and I believe she said that um, they decided to, this, studio or the network or whatever decided to pay a thousand dollars to MGM to air it and they could only air it once and so they aired yeah. it once and it was never in the syndication package or anything. Uh, what's interesting I think too is when you watch the episode I was thinking is this the live one or is this the filmed one it's a little hard to tell because it, it's staged like a, a live performance or like a play. Uh, it's probably of all the episodes I can think of probably the longest sort of sustained bit that he does because it, it starts mm -hmm. fairly early in the episode. I think it's a full 20 minutes long that the whole bit is. And usually they're more like half the episode, if that, maybe they're 10 minutes long that he does the skit. So it's a long skit that he does. Anyway, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good episode. Um, Kathy, what did you think overall about the episode? Did you, did you enjoy it? Did you think it was as funny as you thought it would be? Or, or what did you think about that? Oh, well, I, I need to watch it again a little more closely. But um, like I said, Barbara Stanwyck is great in anything. And yes. certainly in 52 and 53, you know, that's uh, a, a real movie star power. There were very few actual movie stars appearing on in the new medium. 
and Jack Benny was actually known as the I mean, he had Marilyn Monroe on, right, yes, in 53, right. so, and Humphrey Bogart. So he was known as the show that Hollywood stars would be considering uh, willing to go on to television for. Well, he had, he had both of those folks first time on television. Yeah. He also had this Barbara Stanwyck. This is her first time on television, yeah. at least the original 52 version, 53, mm -hmm. of course, was her second time in television. She's still releasing movies all over the place right. throughout the yeah. 50s so and 40s. So she so, has star power. So it, yeah, it, huge star you power. Know, it, it is a kudos to Benny, which would have made it extra special for uh, people trying to watch it. And, um, you know, uh, hooray for him for being, after having sunk all the money into producing it, to be able at least to show it once in 1960. Oh, yeah. And for us to be able to enjoy it now, because that would probably okay. never happen if this wasn't the case. The the 52 version, I don't believe, is in circulation anywhere. So uh, it's out there. I mean, certainly... Uh, mm -hmm. It's in, it, it, according to Laura's book, it's it's like at the U UCLA, I think, and and somewhere else. But uh, but we don't have access to that version, so that's kind of interesting. Well, I think I'll flip it over to Terry. Terry is uh, new to our podcast. Um, it, it, John uh, jumped ship on this week and uh, told me he couldn't make the podcast. I think the whole feud between myself and John, he's taken seriously. So, uh, you know, he might come back with reinforcements or something. I don't know what he's going to do. So we'll, we'll see if John shows up next week. Uh, but until then, we have our wonderful Terry Phillips. And Terry uh, is doing his own kind of new old-time radio show that he's doing, kind of uh, in the style of Twilight Zone somewhat, uh, the fact that it's going to be drama sometimes and comedy sometimes and so forth. He's got one episode out there already. And maybe Terry can tell us a little more about his um, show that he's working on, plus he can tell us his thoughts on, because uh, he also watched Gaslight, well, multiple versions of Gaslight, and he can tell us all about that. So go, it's all yours, Terry, go ahead. Daryl, I'm curious to know which one of you is uh, Jack Benny and which one of you is Fred Allen in this feud? Yeah, I would be Jack. <laughs> You know, I think we, I think we both think we're Jack, but I am really Jack, and he is more the Fred Allen. So. <laughs> well, well, thank you for for um, inviting me to join you. It's uh, it's been a long time coming because I've been listening to your podcasts, the various incarnations of them, for a long time, and uh, it's it's nice to know that I'm not alone in the world of uh, people my generation. I'm I'm you know only sixty seven, but still I. I uh, don't have a lot of pe friends my age, certainly younger, who I know of who listen to these kinds of programs from yeah. from that era. So it's nice to know that that uh, that we have a a place to to come and share our our um, our secret obsessions. Oh, exactly. Um, this is the great. the original version of Gaslight uh, was a stage play. It was produced um, in the 30s, 1938, I believe, and it was British. And then it was made into a movie in 1940, a, a, a European film. And then finally, MGM got its hands on it and tried to erase all previous incarnations of it, although the original still exists. In fact, I watched it uh, a couple of days ago. Right. And it's very, very similar, but of course, without the American star power of Charles Boyer and Ingrid Bergman. And speaking of Ingrid Bergman, she was in the original Jack Benny radio parody version. Of, okay. of Gaslight and uh, it was much funnier the one that Barbara Stanwyck did uh, was funny but it had a, a serious undertone the whole time whereas the original uh, Jack Benny show radio show sketch which um, Phil Harris was in in the the, the Bob Crosby role uh, w was much looser I don't think it lasted as long Ingrid Bergman went up on her lines quite a bit and it was you know, it was kind of a slapdash, typical Jack Benny radio show right. sketch. Whereas the one that he did on television was much more serious, I thought. Much more um, in keeping with the uh, the image of um, Barbara Stanwyck. Yeah. And I think it was fascinating that Barbara Stanwyck did this because in 1944, I believe, when, uh, yeah, it must have been 1944 when Gaslight won or was was up for an Oscar and when Ingrid Bergman won for Best Actress she was up against Barbara Stanwyck in Double oh, Indemnity oh. 
Oh my and Barbara Stanwyck was very that. gracious in losing, and she she was effusive about what a terrific uh, performer uh, Ingrid Bergman was. Although many people believe that Barbara Stanwyck maybe should have won the Oscar, that she was a, a you know a, that hers was a greater role. Nevertheless, I thought it was interesting that she would come back uh, a decade later and do the very role that her her uh, erstwhile competitor beat her for at the Academy Awards. Now, did Barbara Stanwyck ever win an Academy Award after that? Do we know? I don't know. It's a I, great question. I'm sure. I'm sure I, it's a click away, but I don't. Yeah, know it, it is a click away, but but uh, I I want to say I don't think so. So, I mean, usually most stars only get a couple chances at. At, at winning the Oscar, and so unless you're Meryl Streep, I guess. Right? Yes, right, right. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's really interesting. And a performance that you you wonder without that performance by Ingrid Bergman if she would have won because it was quite the tour de force of a performance. I, I just watched Double Indemnity with my daughter here a few months ago because she had to watch it for a class, and of course. As soon as I knew she was in a film class, I was like, oh, I'll watch all of them with you. <laughs> and I did. It was great. But uh, Terry, great presentation of the episode and things. Um, it is worth but, saying that um, part of Gaslight's fame, I mean, famous enough to put a word into the English language. Yes. Because as you can talk about gaslighting somebody, even to, and some people today will, will still use that term. So. Yes, definitely. That some people use it about our president, which is interesting. But uh, um, yeah, gaslighting. Um, does do any of do either of you? Can you explain what gaslighting means in our current use of it? Or do you want me to explain? Sure. It it is leading someone to believe that what they know, what they observe to be true, is not true. Trying to persuade somebody that they're losing their mind, that what they see is 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 not true, not factual. Correct. And I think, I think uh, today when they use gaslighting, the part about them thinking they're insane or trying to drive them insane is, is not the piece that they emphasize. The piece emphasizes what you just said at the beginning of that, which is telling them so many untruths and some truths thrown in that they can't tell what's true and what's not true is sort of uh, what gaslighting is all about and trying to confuse the subject so much. Um, a lot of folks would say there's been a ton of gaslighting by tons of folks about like climate change, things like that, that, that where it makes it all so confusing as to whether it's really happening or not happening. And yeah, exactly. By the way, you, you mentioned that this is a word that has entered our vocabulary. Um, I'm looking at some images of the original playbill of the stage play, the, the 19, I'm going to say 1938 stage play. And in that, on that playbill, gaslight is written as two words, gas, light. Oh, wow. Okay. It's only in the movie version that they push them together. And I think maybe it's because of marketing reasons that it looked better. On yeah, the, yeah. On the marquee. Oh, so. Yeah, interesting. Because they didn't want people to think, oh, this is just only about the era. This is about the whole concept is gaslighting. Yeah, yeah. interesting. So, yeah. Huh. But um the other piece I wanted to talk about about this episode, a couple things. One is I would think it would be so strange to be watching this episode in the time frame, right? So it's 1960, you're watching the episode, and all of a sudden, without any explanation, they're showing an episode where Bob Crosby's on the episode. And I don't think Bob Crosby has been on since the early 50s because he was kind of a semi-regular in the, in the early 50s when he was doing the radio show. But once the radio show was over, Bob was not featured on the TV show much. I think he did a couple more after the radio show, but not much. And uh, so it's interesting seeing him. And, the, and his recurring bit that he does about the fact that uh, this whole, th the, the whole beginning or beeline of this besides being Gaslight is saying that Jack's trying to save money by, he starts the episode by sweeping the floor and, and then he, he plays with uh, Bob, that Bob is doing construction work for him and Bob comes on with a saw and all of that. And even in the, in the actual uh, gaslighting performance, he comes in with his saw and, and the joke is the set's kind of falling apart because he built it and that sort of thing. Um, the other piece of it that I kind of loved was that Mary is sort of kind of in this episode um, and they, they joke about Mary, um, and I don't want to give away what the joke is with Mary, but, but when you watch it, she'll be mentioned a couple times, and, and saving Jack money as well, and it's a cute little bit. Um, the other huge piece that I want to talk about 
that I thought was just hilarious was the commercials are in this. So when they had the Lucky Strike commercials, oh my gosh, I'm like, this is nuts. The, the, they, have, they have one commercial in there where there's a couple scuba divers and the scuba diver hop, gets out of the water you know, in his slick little scuba diving suit, looking like Mr. Macho, and he pulls his, and he's like a model, and uh, and his buddy is smoking a cigarette, hands him the cigarette, he starts smoking the cigarette, and I'm going, oh my gosh, shouldn't you guys be masked up, and this is crazy, you're sharing a cigarette, this is, and then I'm realizing, wait a minute, this is not today, so this is, <laughs> but I'm going, that can't be safe. That can't be good. <laughs> You're going to catch whatever he has. But, but just to see him standing there and trying to look cool and, oh, yeah, your cigarette, your, the macho men are smoking the lucky strikes. And, and there's two commercials on there, and they both do essentially the same thing with the macho sort of uh, image. And it's just kind of interesting to see these old commercials. Did that strike that you, me, you at all? Go the ahead. thing that made me nervous about that was seeing them smoke around um, bottles of compressed air. <laughs> <laughs> I keep waiting for it to blow up. <laughs> well, I, apparently they they uh, they filmed the commercial and 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 had to go with the first printing. I mean, they were going to film another version of it, but then it blew the ship up and <laughs> just, uh, settled on the first one. Oh, that was good enough, guys. I don't think we can do another one because we've lost our stars. So. <laughs> but anyway, what I I just enjoyed this episode tremendously. Uh, I thought it was really interesting, really different for Jack Benny. So. But I think we'll stop there and let the folks go ahead and enjoy the episode. So, uh, it's, like I say, it's a wonderful episode. Oh, Terry, yeah, go over your, over your show before we go. Well, let me just do a little self-promotion here. Yes. This is the yes. website for the new series. Is that, is that visible to everybody? It is visible and clear. It's beautiful. All right. So it's, um, as you said, Daryl, it is um, in the style of old-time radio, um, but with a little bit of uh, Twilight Zone flavor thrown in. Okay. So yes, it's in the style of old time radio with a little bit of Twilight Zone sensibility thrown in. These are short plays. They're meant to be sort of 10 to 15 minutes long. And um, some are funny, some are serious. All of them have a point of view. And uh, I, I hope that they are provocative and entertaining. And, uh, and that, that if uh, people uh, enjoy watching them, that they'll tell their friends. Okay. Excellent. And, and just a question for me, I'm still trying to get it in my head. It's, it's currently on YouTube that it is, or I mean, well, I've just, your launched, site and, I've just launched this website. So now they're also housed in audio form only on the website. Okay. I, I initially put them on YouTube cause that was just an easy way to distribute them, but it, this is not mostly a visual. Uh, in fact, it's not, not really visual at all other than that there's a picture on the screen. Yeah. But it's, this is meant to be like radio. It's an these are audio plays. Okay. Uh, but over time, we might illustrate them somehow, but not to the, not to the point where the pictures are more important. Than the yeah. Sound. The pictures. <laughs> the pictures are. It's that's right between our ears. Yeah. We. Yeah. Make that's right. It's good you have something between your ears because people tell me all the time that I don't have anything there, but you know it's okay. That void. I try to fill that void as with Jack Benny as much as I can. Um, but Terry, and, and then it's not currently a podcast where you'd like get it from a podcast site or anything, is it? Or? Not not yet, but after I have, you know, two or three episodes, once we, we are rolling, uh, then yes, it will also be a podcast and it'll be distributed in all the, the usual places. Um, so the best place I, to come is your website to, to probably for see. For now, it. that's the best place to go, yes. Yeah, excellent, excellent. I love it, I love it. I love it when people do modern, yeah, yeah, exactly. Good luck to you. And, and the you. piece I want to point out, because I did listen to it, um, and I've listened to a lot of new radio where they're, where they're creating a new uh, old-time radio style show. And the, the fall, the problem with most of them is the actors, you can tell they're amateurs and they're not as engaging as certainly the people were in the 1950s. Because, I mean, those people were such professionals. I mean, you're... you're, you're uh, uh, Mel Blanks and your and your um, Frank Nelsons and that were on show after show after show. I mean, they were so professional what they did. But I was really struck by how professional his actors were that Terry is using. That they really seemed like they were of the same quality as the old time radio shows, and I didn't have to go sort of suspend my disbelief and go, I'll just accept that this actor doesn't isn't that great. 
you know, that's not where you're at with Terry's shows. You can actually listen to the thing and go, wow, okay, this feels like truly an old time radio show in a, in a whole lot of ways with great acting. The whole thing is put together really professionally. Nice job, Terry. Thank you, Darrell. We also have a little bit of serendipity going on here. I hope that uh, someday, years from now, people will be listening to this conversation and they'll say, oh yeah, wasn't there a pandemic back in uh, the year 2020? (laughs) Because thanks to the pandemic, you know, one of the few positive things about this, this terrible disease is that actors are limited in where they can perform. We can't go into theaters. We can't True. in front of cameras for the most part, except things like Zoom. And so what does that leave us? Well, it leaves radio, audio plays. And so all of these actors who are, for the most part, you're right, professional actors, uh, can record their parts at home. Then they send the audio files to me. I put them together and add music and sound effects. And we do have, in effect, what they did on stage together in the 30s and 40s. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. And hopefully Terry can join us in future weeks. Uh, We shall see. And Kathy will hopefully be back as well. Uh, You never know. Some weeks it might just be me. It's all, but it's all good. And so enjoy this wonderful episode of the Jack Benny Show, this rare episode. And we will see you folks next week. I'm not sure what we're going to bring you. I'm thinking about Jimmy Stewart's episode. I'm thinking about the Natalie Wood and, uh, Robert and uh, Robert Wagner episode and uh, also the Marilyn Monroe's kind of in there too that I'm thinking so some of these big episodes oh and Johnny Carson I'll tell you what no I do know what we're bringing next week we're bringing you the Johnny Carson episode because I had a number of people ask about we we presented a piece of it last week we presented the um, it was sort of a Twilight Zone-esque ending to it and so we presented the ending and then folks have said well, can you show that whole episode? And and we definitely have the whole episode and it's it's in pretty good video and audio and everything. So we'll present that next week. Tune in for uh, Johnny Carson. And then some of those other folks I mentioned will be in future weeks. So thanks everybody. And I will sign us off. See you later. Thanks everybody. Bye Terry. Bye Kathy. And have a great week guys. With Jack's guests, Barbara Stanwyck and Bob Crosby. Brought to you by Lucky Strike. Get the genuine article. Get the honest taste of a lucky strike. The place, engine room. The cigarette, lucky strike. This man's brand because he wants the honest taste to find the back. In luckies, he gets it. Sometimes a cigarette is your only companion. In that case, try Lucky Strike. It's mild, but not too mild, with a taste that's fresh, smooth, and unforgettable. Never was a man who could forget the taste of a genuine cigarette. Get the honest taste a man can like. The honest taste of a Lucky Strike. The honest taste of a Lucky Strike. Get the genuine article. Get the honest taste of a lucky strike. Terribly sorry, my watch must have been slow. I <laughs> so embarrassing. Put on the curtain, please. You know the reason. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. But the reason that I was um, oh, this is awful. The reason I was backstage sweeping, sweeping the stage. You see, I have what is known in show business as a package deal. By that I mean that my my sponsor, you see, pays me uh, a certain amount of money for each show, and anything that I save, I can keep. (laughs) You'd be amazed how much stagehands get. (laughs) But anyway, um, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, my, um, look, look, the, the spotlight is supposed to follow me wherever I go. 
No, no, right here. Here I am. That's it. Thank you. I said, watch it, Mary. <laughs> Whatever I save, I can keep, you see. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight my guest star is Miss Barbara Stanwyck. Now, uh... Thank you. She'll be glad to hear about that. But, uh, you see, Miss Stanwyck, you're, you all know, uh, you're all familiar with Miss Stanwyck's work in the movies. I mean, she's been in so many of them. As a matter of fact, Miss Stanwyck has been in pictures almost as long as I've been out of them. <laughs> see, I haven't made a picture since the, um... Gee, I'll never forget the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> Unfortunately, that picture, the horn blows at midnight, wasn't made in three dimension. It was just one dimension. Lousy. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a play. With... Hold it, hold it, hold all that noise back hold there. It. Yeah, listen, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to... Check... Anything I save, I can keep, you know. Then, what do you, what do we, what'd you say, Bob? May I have a word with you? Yeah, what, what, look at Bob. You know, we're going to do our play pretty soon. Have you got the scenery built yet? That's what I want to speak to you about. You got a lot of nerve making me stay backstage building sets. Well, this is a fine time to complain. I mean, you volunteered to do it. I volunteered. You tricked me. What do you mean I tricked you? Well, when you needed a carpenter, you came over to me and you said, Bob, in what state is Little Rock? And when I said Arkansas, you handed me this and said, Little Rock. <laughs> I thought it was clever. <laughs> well, you know how to use it, don't you? If I did, I'd have sawed that joke right out of the script. <laughs> it's mine, huh? I see. Well, look at Bob. Uh, now, look, at, before we go into our play, you have to do your song, you see? So go back to your dressing room and take off those overalls. But I haven't got a dressing room. Well, build yourself one. <laughs> I gave him a saw. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our play tonight, the one that Barbara Stanwyck and I are going to do, uh, we did about two years ago. It's a satire on a Metro Goldwyn's Mayor famous classic, Gaslight, which we call Autolite, <laughs> a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. And we, oh, I knew I had one other thing to tell you. Uh, this has nothing to do with the play. But yesterday, I ran into a friend of mine from my hometown, from Waukegan, Illinois, see? An old buddy of mine from Waukegan. We used to go to school together. And he told me that he had a daughter who was an acrobatic dancer. And he wanted to know if I could give her an opportunity on my show. He said if she just had one television show, she could really go places, you see? And naturally, I couldn't turn him down because, you know, we were buddies in Waukegan. So I'd like to have you meet his daughter, Miss Mildred, Miss Mildred Thompson. Uh, go, go ahead, Mildred, go ahead. <laughs> you see, it didn't take long. At least it makes her father happy. Where she's going with that act, I don't know. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Crosby will sing, I Don't Care If the Sun Don't Shine. I don't care if the sun don't shine, I get my loving in the evening time when I'm with my baby. It's no fun with the sun around, but I get going when the sun goes down and I'm my baby. That's when we kiss and then we kiss and then we kiss some more. Don't ask how many times we kiss At a time like this, who keeps score? I don't care if the sun don't shine I get my loving in the evening time When I'm with my baby 
sun contains a ray, they label vitamin D. If you like vitamin D, it's quite all right with me. But I am here to say that I like vitamin low, but I can't get vitamin low with that doggone sun above. Care it, sun don't shine. I get my loving in the evening time when I'm with my baby. It's no fun with the sun around, but I get going when the sun goes down and I meet my baby. That's when we kiss, and then we kiss, kiss and kiss some more. Don't ask how many times we kiss at a time like this. Who keeps score? So I don't care if the sun don't shine. I get my loving in the evening time when I'm with my gentlemen and now i know that you're all anxious to see mr jack benny and his very delightful guest miss barbara stanley so without further ado i'm going to turn you over to don wilson who will set the scene for the skits don ladies and gentlemen the jack benny lucky strike players starring barbara stanwyck bring you their version of one of the greatest the greatest yes there's no doubt about it a lucky strike is the greatest. Nothing here but the honest taste of fine tobacco. Fresh and unforgettable. It's mild, but not too mild. Get the genuine article. Get the honest taste of a lucky strike. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Jack Benny player starring Barbara Stanwyck bring you that great psychological drama, Autolite. <laughs> The scene is the living room on the first floor of a four-story house in a gloomy and unfashionable quarter of London in the year 1871. Outwardly, the atmosphere is one of peace, for even the servants are unaware that for the past weeks, the master of the house has been systematically pursuing a sinister, diabolical scheme to drive his wife insane. I thought the master wanted Mrs. Manningham to have supper in her room. He did, but she insisted on eating in here. And if you ask me, I think she's off her trolley. <laughs> the master said she ordered this for her dinner. What is it? Marinated salami. <laughs> she's an odd one, all right. The master says if she doesn't get any better, he's going to send her away. Shh, for... Here she comes now. If you need me, I'll be in the pantry. Right out. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I, I've changed my mind. I don't think I'll eat anything. Oh, but why, madam? Uh, don't you feel well? These headaches, these awful, frightful headaches pounding day in and day out. My husband tells me I keep doing things I don't even remember. I can't sleep at night. I keep tossing and turning and wondering what's going to become of me. Oh, why? Why do I get these awful headaches? Madam, uh, perhaps if you ate something, you would feel better. Yes. Yes, maybe you're right. I know you're going to enjoy your supper. It's exactly what your husband said you ordered. What's that? Marinated salami. <laughs> Marinated salami? Yes. Um, shall I pour the sour cream? <laughs> no. no, don't pour anything. I'm going mad, I tell you. I don't even remember ordering anything like that. Oh, these headaches, these awful headaches. Where is my husband? Why isn't he here when I need him? Oh, madam... I think the master just came oh, in. Oh, good. Good. You may go, Elizabeth. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad. 
glad you're home. The hours that you're away drag on and on. I can't live without you by my side. I need your sympathy, your help, your tender understanding. Oh, my beloved, my darling. Only you can guide me through the darkness of my confusion. Only you can make me smile again, laugh again, live again. Oh, Charles, speak to me, speak to me. What are you doing out of your room? <laughs> Answer me, Bella. What are you doing out of your room? Oh, I, I had to come out. It's these headaches, these awful headaches. I've been confined to my room all day and it was driving me mad. Breakfast in bed, lunch in bed. I couldn't have dinner in bed. It was full of dirty dishes. <laughs> Ah, my poor Bella, control yourself. You're getting hysterical. What you need is a sedative. I'll ring for the maid. <laughs> Bella, while you're waiting for the sedative, why don't you just sit here and relax? Yes, Charles. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes, Bella, and forget everything. Yes, Charles. <laughs> you feel better now, Bella? Oh, yes, Charles, yes. I knew if you just sat here and relaxed, you'd feel so much, so much... Charles, what are you staring at? That picture on the wall. Why did you turn it upside down? Picture upside down? But I didn't. I didn't turn the picture upside down. It must have been someone else. Oh, Charles, what's happening to me? What's happening to me? <laughs> that other picture is upside down, too. Look. No, no. Why do you keep doing these things? But I didn't. I didn't. Oh, Bella. Bella, your mind is failing you. Why don't you, you keep turning pictures upside down and you don't even remember? But I didn't turn it upside down. It must have been someone else. Someone else. Always someone else. Are you suggesting that one of the maids or the butler did it? Yes. Yes, that's it. The butler. The butler, he must have done it. Very well. I'll find out. <laughs> oh, Charles, don't humiliate me in front of the servants, please. It's the only way, Bella. I'll ring for the butler. is upside down, then, then perhaps I did do it. But I don't remember. Don't remember? Where is that butler? Where is he? Jeeves! Jeeves! <laughs> Jerry, hold your rings up! <laughs> Jeeves, those pictures are upside down. Did you notice them? Well, by Joe, we think. Did you do it? Oh, me? Maybe you did it when you were dusting. Yes. Yes, Jeeves. Maybe you did it while you were working. Me? Working? <laughs> oh, your lordship, come now. Then I assume that you did not turn those pictures upside down. Pip, pip. <laughs> there you are, Bella. Then you're the one who did But I don't remember. I don't remember. Don't remember. Don't remember. Lately, you've been doing everything backwards. Yesterday, when we came back from the fox hunt, you hung your riding habit in the stable and put the horse in that closet. <laughs> Bella, you must admit, there's something wrong with you. Why don't... You must let me take you away. Jeeves, you may go. Thank you, sir. May I have tomorrow? Tomorrow off? Why? The cricket matches, you know. <laughs> Thank you, boss. What? Uh, right, oh, governor. <laughs> I hope now, Bella, that you realize that you are mentally ill. Oh, oh, Charles, where are you going? I have an appointment. Oh, every night you leave me alone. Tell me, is it another woman? I hate to admit it, 
But the answer is no. <laughs> Goodbye, Bella. Wait, before you go, kiss me. Very well, Bella. How was that, Bella? One dimension. <laughs> Charles, I'd be crazy. What do you want? I want to see you. I am an inspector from Scotland Yard, and I've come to talk to you about your husband. Oh, my poor Charles, is he in danger? No, but you are. Me? Yes. You see, your husband is a notorious jewel thief. And 15 years ago, he murdered a woman in this very mansion. And then he married you, so that under the guise of an English gentleman, he could come back and search the place for her jewels. No, Inspector. Just call me Charles. <laughs> Inspector, you're hurting me! Oh, 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 I'm so terribly sorry. <laughs> well, as I was saying, you see, your husband, your husband is trying to drive you out of your mind so that he can send you away and that he can continue the search in the attic. Oh, so that's why the lights go dim down here. He turns the gas on in the attic. Yes, and he has a secret door through which he can return without uh, and pretend that nothing had happened. Inspector, how do you know so much about this house? Well, I built it. <laughs> if your husband asks you where Little Rock is, say Idaho. <laughs> talking about. But tell me, what are you going to do with my husband? Well, I have a plan, which... The lights! They're coming up again. That means he's coming down. Quick, get in the closet! <laughs> he may have to be in there for a long time. I'd better get him something to eat. Inspector! Inspector! Did you call me? Yes, I... Wait a minute, you were in this closet. You see, I was testing you. You did remember. You are sane as I am. Oh, thank goodness. Here, in case you get hungry. What is that? Marinated salami. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> My husband. Oh, he's coming back. Well, Bella, are you feeling better? Oh, yes, Charles. My headache is all gone. Oh. <laughs> Bella, how careless of you to leave this napkin on the floor. Oh, I'll put it in the no, closet. No, no, I'll put it in the closet. <coughs> no, no, uh, not that closet. What? That is the linen closet. Very well. You know, Bella, I was talking to Dr. Pepper today, and uh, as we were having a Coke, he told me that uh, tomorrow <laughs> after... Charles, did you put the napkin in the closet? I didn't have to. The closet reached out and grabbed it. Oh, Charles, you're talking crazy. No, no, Bella. You're the one that's crazy. Keep going around this house, turning everything upside down. Now, Bella, why don't you admit? Your mind is failing. Let me send you away. I'll have the butler pack your bags. Gee! Howard! <laughs> Jeeves, pack Madam's bag. But before you do, bring me a brandy. <laughs> yes, Bella. Everything is wrong lately. 
Tonight, you turned the pictures upside down. Yesterday, you turned the desk upside down. The table's upside down. The chair's upside down. You keep going all over the house, turning everything upside down. <laughs> Did you notice something different about the butler? Yes, Charles. And I found out something different about you, too. You did? Your game is up. Your scheme didn't work. I know who you are and what you are. I know what you've been trying to do to me. Oh, you do, eh? Well, then, my dear Bella, the time for subtleties is over. Oh! Say, do you have a piece of rye bread? Inspector, help me! Help me! Mr. Manningham, unhand that woman. Lady Bella, I shall take this man to the police station and then I'll come back and I will check for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes. The ones on the rug belong to the butler. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, before you take him away, I'd like to talk to my husband alone. Then I'd better tie him to this chair. I'll be in the kitchen if you should need me. That was very clever of you, Bella. And the way he fell for it. What? Look at me, Bella. I'm Charles, your husband. And you love me. Bella. Bella, go over to that table over there. There's a knife. Get that knife, Bella. Oh, yes. Get that knife and cut me loose. Oh, yes, cut the me knife. Loose. The knife. That's right, Bella. Bella. Bella, why are you standing there? Bella, aren't you going to cut me loose? Oh, yes, Charles. I'm going to cut you very loose. <laughs> your husband, Charles. Yes, Charles, you're my husband. And you tried to make me believe that I was crazy. Well, maybe I am. Maybe I am. But it was you who drove me to it. It was you who turned the pictures upside down. It was you who turned the lamp upside down and almost convinced me that I did it. Then you turned the table upside down, the desk upside down. The other day I baked an upside down cake and you turned it right side up. <laughs> We'll be back with his guest, Barbara Stanwyck, in just a moment. But first, here's a word about the honest taste of a lucky strike. A smoke goes good when you're working. Or is it that the work goes better when you're smoking? Take a lucky strike. Yeah, take a lucky strike next time you smoke on the job. You'll find it's mild, but not too mild. Even a quick smoke tastes good if it's lucky strike. Nothing here but the honest taste of fine tobacco. Fresh and unforgettable. Never was a man who could forget the taste of a genuine cigarette. Get the honest taste a man can like. The honest taste of a lucky strike. The honest taste of a lucky strike. Get the genuine article. Get the honest taste of a lucky strike. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. You were a wonderful audience, and now I would like to once again have you meet my guest star, Miss Barbara Stanwyck. Barbara, I must say again, that you were just wonderful on my show. Well, it was my pleasure, Jack. I, I would also like to tell you that I'm a great fan of yours and your television show, and uh, also I think you have one of the finest radio programs on the air today. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. But, of course, uh, how could you help it with such a wonderful personality as Mary Livingston? <laughs> Thanks, Mary. <laughs> See you in about.
about 10 minutes. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. One week from tonight on this same station, be sure and view Bachelor Father, starring John Forsythe. On most of these stations, watch the exciting Western series, Trackdown, starring Robert Culp. Brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company. Remember, tobacco is our middle name. Jack Benny's next television show will be in two weeks. This is Don Wilson saying good night.